Prophet John Anoche is made possible by partners of John Anoche Ministries. Still to come on Word of Life with Prophet John Anoche. So one third will be left and they will do what? I will bring the one third through the fire. Through the fire means tribulation, persecution, the hour of trial. I will bring the one third through the fire. Somebody will ask me, what is the essence of this retite? Hold on, the prophet is speaking. We will refine them as silver as refined. And he will refine them as silver is refined. Church, if you don't go through persecution and trial and tribulation and persecutions, you cannot be refined because persecutions and trial and tribulations makes you strong. Apostles went through it. The church is going to go through it. The prophets that God has sent to the world who handles this subject matter are talking all over the world. I said we shall go through it. Write in your diary and see it. All the movies about rapture, they are wrong. I wish I would talk about Jesus and not just his principle. <laughs> but it's because we must conclude on it today so that next week we can go into the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, there's something I want to discuss with you. The Bible said something in the book of, the book of John chapter number 4. And I want us to read from the verse number 23. Well, let's start from the verse number 21. John chapter 4, verse 21. Yes, sir. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will be on this mountain or in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. So in the past, People must be found in certain places where, you know, the, the altars were built to go there and worship. They need, to, they need to physically go there and worship. But Jesus said the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers. So in the midst of true worshippers, they have other worshippers and they are also false worshippers. The hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers, the time that the true worshippers, they shall no longer go to the mountain to worship God. But they shall be anywhere that they will find themselves. But their heart will open up unto God. Their spirit will connect to the altar. That is why wherever you are, it doesn't matter. Whether you are watching online, Zoom, and, and, and YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, wherever. You are a true worshiper. You are connected to the altar of the Lord. It's because the Bible says that we should not forget the assembling of ourselves together. So it's not every day we assemble together, but once a while we assemble ourselves together, maybe twice in a week. But then we are true worshippers, so wherever we are, we are connected to God. Now, the true worship, the worshippers, the other worshippers who went to the mountains to worship God, the Lord Jesus did not say they are false worshippers, they are other worshippers. But the Lord was saying that not in this mountain anymore, because they were questioning Jesus. And he said, are you greater than our father Jacob who dug this well on the mountain? The Samaritans thought that the altars were in their midst. The Samaritans thought that since somewhere lived in our midst and had this high place there, if you need to worship, you need to come to this mountain where Shiloh is. But Jesus said, and that is the reason why you, you have become prideful. That is the reason why you people have become boasters and worshiping every other spirit. But true worshipers will no longer go to that mountain, but true worshipers shall be everywhere to worship the Lord. That's what Jesus said. But Jesus did not touch on his principles. He defined the state of heart. The state of heart to worship. So a lot of people have used scriptures they did not understand to defile the word of God itself. But today we are continuing about the prophetic side, the mystery of the tenth part, which is in actual fact called tithes. The mystery of it. I want you to understand it. Remember I talked about the principles of tithes. Now, the reason why, because tithe is not and was not an earthly principle. The altar was never an earthly principle. It came from heaven. 
Moses went to receive it. Offerings and all of that were not something that were with men. The first people that did offering that we saw was Cain and Abel. That meant that Adam would have taught them because he was the first man. That meant that God would have also taught Adam. But offerings were used to worship God. But not tithes. Nobody ever paid tithes at the time until Abraham. Which was instituted as a covenant between him and God. Now, so I want us to go into the book of Genesis chapter 14. The verse number 18. Let's consider something there. You know, people have been using grammar. And people have been using words. And people have been using Greek and Hebrew renditions. And it is good because the word of God is in that sense. It's in grammar, but not interpreted with grammar. So today, we are going to check it now. Genesis chapter 14. Verse, verse 18, 18, yes. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, yes. brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. He was the priest of God most high. So the most high is emphasized. He was the priest of God most high. All right, because after that engagement, nobody saw him on earth anymore. Because he just came to deliver something and to collect something and entered back to heaven. So he was the priest of God most high. Check the constructions. Let's go ahead. And he blessed him and said. And he blessed him and said. Blessed be Abraham of God most high, possessor of heaven and So earth. blessed be Abraham who is from God. Blessed be Abraham of God. Blessed be Abraham from God. It's like today somebody says, Blessed be John of God, most high. Possessor of heaven and earth. Possessor of heaven and earth. Yes. And blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And then he now saluted God and said, Blessed be God most high. So, blessed be Abraham of God most high. He was talking about Abraham. He was blessing Abraham. And he attributed to the fact that something has been given to Abraham, which is heaven and earth. It was a promise unto Abraham. And Melchizedek from heaven understood what God has done. And for Abraham to be able to possess also heaven, something must be given unto him. A bread and a wine must be given unto Abraham. As a symbol of the sacrifice that will be. As a symbol of his flesh. As a symbol of his blood. That would be. Thank you God. Because the Bible said Jesus. Our Lord was crucified. From the foundations of the world. Glory be to Jesus. Now please proceed apostle. And blessed be God. Who has delivered the enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tithe of all. So the first part which is the. 19 part he was talking about Abraham he said and he blessed him and said blessed be Abraham of God Abraham from God who is a possessor of heaven and earth so the first salutation was unto Abraham so blessed be Abraham of God from God possessor of heaven and earth if you are not careful you would think he's addressing God but he was addressing Abraham then the second verse, which is the 20th verse, then he also blesses Abraham. And somebody says, ah, he's repeating the same thing. No, because God, when he wants to make a God, he doesn't make God less of himself, but he make, are you not all called gods? So the Bible said, when the Son of God came to the earth, when he is the express image of God, the epitome of God. Hallelujah. The exact expression of God. He's not less of God. And then he called us his brethren. Mary, go and tell my brothers. He has positioned us as sons of God. Not less of himself. But has given us time to develop to the fullness of him. That fill all things in all. Please, are you hearing the gospel now? Yes, sir. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Karabashanda. So the second one is when he says, And blessed be God, most high, possessor of heaven and earth. Now, if you understand these two terminologies, you will notice that he's talking about Abraham and Abraham's seed. Who is the Lord? Now, because you're going to go somewhere so that you can understand. These are mysteries I'm, I'm revealing unto you. Check the scripture carefully. Many, many people have read it. I know many 
Many great men, great people of God. Great people of God. They are great because you saw them in the air doing exploit for God. The greatness of Jesus was because of the testimony of God. Glory. Now hear this word. Who has delivered your enemies into your, into your hands. And then he says what? So he was talking about the God, Most High, who has delivered the enemies of Abraham into his hands. And then Abraham did something. He did what? And he gave him a tithe of all. And he gave Melchizedek, who was doing this salutation. It's like he knew Abraham. He was making appellation. He was telling him who he is. And also recognizing the Elohim and said, this is all the tithe. How did he know to prepare tithe to give to him? The Bible says Abraham was a prophet. That meant that God had already spoken to Abraham. Like some of the words that we have read in the books of Genesis where he says that but your children shall be in bondage for over 400 years. He told him so he gave him an advanced knowledge, a prophetic word. So Abraham knew that his children would be in bondage. He passed on to Isaac. Isaac passed on to Jacob. But they couldn't resist it. Unknown to them they entered into Egypt and they were there for 400 years. Farming took them there. But the reason for the farming was that the farming was going to happen to all the other nations except the deliverer of the world at that time who was Joseph. Because he was the heir that his father gave him the coat of many colors. But they sent him and sold him into Egypt. So God must have no choice than to project the dream and the visions unto the place where Joseph was kept in prison. The king over there. So that Joseph will be placed in the king's place. So that he will now bring the idea and the ideology and the technology of God. To keep food. To sustain the people who believe. And where he found himself refuge. So they sold Joseph. Now when they sell somebody to Ghana. And we buy him. And then we put him here as a slave. Unless that nation is ready to buy him back. He, they cannot come and take him. These are legalities. It's like it's, it's the same thing as naturalizing for a nation. The moment I go to America and I naturalize for America, eh, you cannot come and arrest me because my descent is from Ghana. You cannot do that. They will fight for me. Why? Because I'm their citizen. Some of you have given birth in America. Your children are Americans. Touch them and you will see they will come after you. Your child is living in Ghana, but they are paying your child. That is the same thing that happened to Joseph. Joseph was sold into slavery. They bought him with a price. But Joseph's brethren, who later multiplied to be what? To be the Israelite, they were not bought. So today, as we speak, they are still the children of Joseph in Egypt. Because Joseph gave the firstborns, he gave, born, he gave birth to twins as his firstborn, who were adopted into Israelite as Ephraim and Manasseh. So they went to what? Israel when they were leaving. But they went to live in Goshen. But Joseph gave birth other children with the daughter of the priest over there. The other children were not redeemed. They were not bought by Jacob. So they remained with the Egyptians according to the principle. So Ephraim and Manasseh always had siblings in Egypt. So anytime there was a war or any farming situation or they were uncomfortable, they ran to Egypt. And when they went there, they were worshippers of idols. And they joined them to worship idols. That was why when the northern kingdom came into the hands of Ephraim, he instituted other priests other than the priests of God to worship the gods of Egypt. And he got angry and said, I will exchange you. I'll send you to the ends of the world and bring the Assyrians to live and occupy your place. So when Jesus came, the people he came to meet, they were called dogs and swine. Rabado Shehandis. Thank you, Lord. We give God praise. Now, he said, blessed be Abraham of God, of Most High, the possessor of heaven and earth. He gave him a tent of all, the tithe of all, the tent of all. Tithe simply means, it's a Hebrew word, tithe means tent of all. I gave you the interpretation of the Hebrew. And I told you what tithe means in Hebrew. When the Hebrew man says asha, it means blessing. Now hear this word. So when you talk about tithe in the Hebrew, you are talking about maser or masra. It means tenth part of all. And Abraham gave it to 
Melchizedek. And Melchizedek took the tithe to heaven. And the proof that tithe is not only paid in the earth realm is this one. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. Now I'm showing you the mystery of, of it, of the tithe. Take it once and for all and work with it. You shall be blessed. Let's go there. Hebrews chapter, chapter 7. seven. Hebrews chapter 7, quickly. From verse 1. Yes, sir. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, yes. who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. So he met Abraham like the book of Genesis was describing the actual event. After he defeated the kings, and he was returning from the slaughter of the kings, and then Melchizedek met him, and he gave him the tithe of all. He refused to be blessed by the world. Abraham had delivered the people from bondage. He had delivered from the people from atrocities. His nephew Lot was part of them. And they offered him gifts, gold, money. These are kings offering you things. It's like the king or the president of Ghana is offering you a reward for defeating the enemies of Ghana. Houses, gold, millions of dollars. You become rich overnight. But Abraham said, no, we are going to read that one. I will not take anything from you, even from a sandal strap, so that you will not say that I have made Abraham rich. Abraham wanted to boast. His boast shouldn't be the boast of men, but it should be the boast in God. If he's boasting, he's boasting because Elohim had blessed him, not men. Now, Apostles, so he says what? Verse 2, to whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. Abraham gave a tenth part. Not all the money, but the tenth part of his income. Every income that he had. Abraham was a farmer. He had cattle, he had flock of sheep, he had goat, he had ox, oxen. Abraham had birds, Abraham had gold, silver. He was a trader, he was a well digger. He had oil, petroleum, he had money. But Abraham did not consider himself rich at the time. Why? Because... He needed to pay his tithe first. A tenth of all. He gave it. You see, that scripture gives you a lot of insight. Why did he reject the offer from the world and only accepted it for his people who went to fight? The soldiers who went to fight, but not him. He said, no, I do not want you to tell me that you have made me rich. For my riches must come from Christ. So Melchizedek stood and collected because he was ready to be rich. And he had part his tithe before. So God saw faith with Abraham. You had not seen Melchizedek here to rush and say, okay, I used it. Let me get it. No. The guy had already packed it. So when he met Melchizedek, it was with him. And he offered him. And Abraham was a man of faith. So he had faith that one day he would meet Melchizedek. So he carried his tithe and gave it to Melchizedek. And Melchizedek blessed him and handed over unto him bread and wine. What? Heaven has already given unto the earth the promise of God. We are going to be reading some things because you need to understand some things. Tithe is beyond just payment. You are going to understand something deeper today. Now, please, let's go ahead, Apostle. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all, first being translated, king of righteousness. Yes, he's and then describing also, Melchizedek, that he's the king of righteousness, yes. And then also king of Salem, meaning... He's also the king of Salem, meaning... King of peace. King of peace. Now, there's a difference between Salem and Jerusalem. Now, see, Jerusalem is the, the Bible says, is the heavenly city. God brought it to call David's city like that. The capital city of Israel was Jerusalem, where David the king dwelt. The same way, the holy city that will come from heaven is called Jerusalem, heavenly Jerusalem, where the king would dwell. So anytime God is setting up something in the heavenly, there is a prototype that he set upon the earth realm. More or less like a shadow of the original. So when you see the shadow, there's the original. Now let's go at apostle. Without father, without mother, without genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life. All right. But made like the son of God, remains a priest Here, continually. He's also compared. He's been made like the son of God. So he is not the son of God. So it doesn't matter who is a scholar anywhere who is telling you that Jesus is Melchizedek. It's wrong. Jesus is Jesus, the Lord. Melchizedek is not the Lord. He never called himself the Lord. He said he's a king of Salem. He's a king where he dwells. There's peace because in heaven there's no conflict where he is. Somebody will tell about heaven. 
The war broke out in heaven. What heaven was that? Angelic heaven. Not where God dwells. Heavens are a lot. Check where. Even Peter, uh, Paul was caught up into the third heavens. That should tell you that they are heavens. When you read the book of Psalm 140, it says, The heavens of heaven. The heaven of heavens. The heavens of heaven. So which side? Now, please go ahead. Verse 4. Now consider how great this man was. So consider how great. He's a man, but he's from heaven. So that's why I told you that it's not only on earth that men are. Men, the Bible said the man Jesus came from heaven. Melchizedek, at least he's been described, a man from heaven. When the three men visited Abraham, they were called men. Daniel saw the angels and said, the man Gabriel. Why? Because he looked like a man. Please, let's go ahead. Now consider how great this man was. To whom even the patriarch Abraham gave a tent of the spoils. Listen, consider how this great man was. And he says, even the patriarch, the man who started a generation of faith. What, what is his patriarch about? If you are not starting anything. There's something Abraham started. Has he ended? No. Because the promise was unto Abraham and his seed. Abraham died naturally, but the Bible says God is not the God of the dead. And therefore he said the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Because the Bible said, Jesus said, if you believe in me, even though you were dead, yet shall you live. Abraham believed the Lord, his seed. So he died, he died but yet lived. Because he believed in him. So Jesus appeared and said, if Abraham was your father, you would do the works of Abraham. What are the works of Abraham? The works of faith. Faith. Now let's go ahead. And indeed, yes. those who are the sons of Levi, who received the priesthood, have a commandment to receive tithes on the people according to the law. Yes. That is from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. Okay. But so he he's who's... talking about Levi, who came from the loins, that means from the boils of Abraham. Abraham gave birth to him. At that time, he had not given birth to even Isaac. For Isaac to give birth to Jacob and Jacob to give birth to Levi. So they were all in his loins. And God knew them all, the generation in him. So the Bible says he took the tithe, he gave the tithe, and received commandment on the earth for Abraham's children to pay tithe to his son Levi. Please, we are discussing something profound in the prophetic books. Hear this. Abraham took the tithe. Abraham gave the tithe to Melchizedek. Melchizedek bestowed priesthood oil upon Abraham. He was already a prophet ordained by God. That is why it is not necessary priest that ordain prophets. I know what I'm saying. Because otherwise a lot of people will have a lot of confusions and say something like, because Eli directed Samuel as to the voice he was hearing, a lot of people, that is why they say you need a father. But the prophetic message itself about Eli was given to Samuel. What about Moses? Who ordained him? A priest from where? They will talk about Midian. The guy never touched Moses. He didn't even know Moses was a deliverer. Moses went out to tend the sheep of Jethro and he had an encounter with God. He was ordained by God. Jethro cannot and will not be in a position of God to say that. Yet men, of, men without understanding will attribute this grace unto Jethro. Because later that he advised him and God says, okay, it's a good advice. But don't you know God puts advice in the heart of people to give to his own people? Now we are communicating something profound here. So Levi was in the loins of Abraham. Abraham paid the tithe and received the blessing of tithe. Now and then when he received the blessing of tithe from Melchizedek, now the priesthood was now on Ephraim as far as the earth is concerned, the ones who will become priests was given to Levi, one of his sons, but he was not born yet. So that is what the Bible is describing. Apostle, read that particular scripture, the fifth verse again. Indeed. And indeed, yes. those who are the sons of Levi. Those who are of the sons of Levi. Who received the priesthood. Who received. The priesthood was received. They didn't earn it. It was just spoken unto them. Who received the priesthood. Have a commandment to receive tithes. They the have people. a commandment. From the prophet Moses, from God, to receive tithe from who? The people, according their, to the law. The people, their own brethren, according to the law. 
The reason why he put according to the law is that today we have a different priesthood other than the Levites. It is not according to the law anymore. But has priesthood, you know, has it ceased to function? No. Has it changed? Yes. Priesthood has changed from Levi unto the high priest Christ. And Christ ordains his own priest. We are going to check it. So we are going somewhere. They did not understand the word, I'm telling you. If you try to understand where I'm, you want to know where I'm going to, you may not. Just follow me as I follow Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Please, let's go ahead. To receive tithes on the people according to the law, that is from their brethren. That is from their brethren. You want to be specific. So somebody says, no. How can I give tithe to a priest who is my brother? No. You are mistaken. They pay tithe to their own brother, Levi. Why? He was set apart for that purpose. So he says, ordain priests from among your brethren. So priesthood are ordained from among the brethren. If somebody is going to superimpose priests from somewhere upon you, it is wrong. That is why Jesus was chosen from among his own brethren. So the Antichrist comes and says, I'm a priest, I'm an Antichrist, I'm a Christ. He's lying, he's not from among the brethren. He's not a Christian, he's not a child of God. He's not, it's a lie. And he will cease offerings and sacrifices, yet he will sacrifice to the God of the fortress. When people understand, they will not say Jesus sees all the offerings. It's not true. He is inter interceding. Anybody who is interceding doesn't stop offerings. Because what is the essence of intercession? You think he's talking. No. The realm is where you go to. Where God is seated there, you don't need to talk. It's an act. God, the Papa God is sitting there. What is Jesus saying? He's living in Jesus and sitting on the throne. What is he saying? It is an oblation. Uh, uh, offering of burning incense on the golden altar that is the essence of intercession so somebody says I'm sent as an intercessor God will explicate the meanings the exactness of intercession to you you will not miss the mark and intercession is not about praying against the devils it's not intercession when we are before God interceding it is only children of God 12 stones, precious stones that we take before God the devil is not part. There's no other stone that represents the devil. I am a Koshimi Catalis on the hey Sokopa Akise Arono Satis. Let me go slowly so that the people of God can understand. Now, please let's go ahead, Apostle Shakaba Hushi. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for ordaining me a vessel of mercy, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Please let's go ahead. That is from their brethren, though they have come from the loins of Abraham. So though they have come from the loins of Abraham, they qualify to receive tithe so that it doesn't confuse you that because they've come from the loins of Abraham, they are small boys. How can they be the one to receive tithe? Not Abraham. The Bible says they has been ordained like that. Abraham accepted it, allowed it. He chose that one of his sons prophetically within him will become Levi and take the tithe of his people unto Christ, the seed. And in the dispensation of the Lord, they look unto Christ, but they did not see him. They saw him afar off. The, the Bible says, they hope for a better resurrection. From where? They saw that Jesus will come later on. The Bible says, the Bible says something, Peter said. He said, these things, they, they, they desire to look into. Jesus himself said it. He said, what you see, people desire to look into this. They pray that their time will be this time, but it was not given. Now, please, let's go ahead. But he whose genealogy is not derived from them received tithes from Abraham okay. and blessed him who had the promises. The genealogy of Melchizedek is not from them, but he received tithes from them and blessed him who had the promises. So it's like today you have been promised. You shall this, you shall receive health, you shall receive that. And the same concept, Abraham was not living under the law. He's a genealogy, he's, he's a father, he's a patriarch of faith. So Abraham did not operate under the law. So if what they are saying is true, then it means that Abraham should not have paid tight at all. But he had the promises from God that in you and your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. 
It's like God has spoken to you and said, you are blessed. I have blessed you and your generation. I have done this for you. You live in health. You live in by his stripes. You are healed. These are all promises packaged for you in Christ. You have been promised by God. Why do you pay tithes? That is the argument of many people. Why would Abraham, who is what? Having the promises of God, who has been promised that you will go, but you will resurrect to a better resurrection. How would he pay tithes? Like you, you have been what? Promised. But uh, is your promise abiding alone other than the promises of Abraham? No. I'm going to open the scripture for you now. No. Please repeat this sixth verse. But he who's what? He whose genealogy, he whose genealogy is not derived from them, received tithes from Abraham. Yes. And blessed him who had the promises. He blessed him who had the promises. He had the promises, but he needed to be blessed. The same way Abraham had the promises, but Jesus. The seed had to come and bless the seed and the sons of Abraham. You have the promises. Somebody says, God has promised us a lot, but why are we not experiencing it? They are setting things, the Lord. It is supposed to be done because you have the promises, but the one who had the promises also had to do it to ensure his prosperity upon the earth realm. The visible prosperity upon the earth realm. And he did. And Abraham died a great man. The Bible says when Abraham died, the Bible says of him that he was rich in cattle. He was rich in gold. He was, when somebody is rich in gold, it's not some one, two, four gold. Not one door bar gold. No. We are talking about her. Several kilos of gold. Packed. Handed down unto Isaac. Abraham became a whole country. One man lived in a place and he was compared to nations at the time. Before Abraham died, he was rubbing minds with nations. Abraham lived on the land and he had become a nation with his 318 trained soldiers. There were more, but they were the ones sent, qualified to send and then war. Anybody going to war will not go with all the soldiers and leave only women and children. No, wisdom should tell you that and such a man like Abraham a prophet should tell you that he will leave some of the army there. And perhaps he left a lot, more than what we were going to the war. And this all lived in Abraham's house, his household, his country, and they ate from his pot. He was not a poor man today. How many of us can feed with it from his own pocket? 318 men who are going to the war, and their children and their children and wives are in the houses, and also other soldiers in the houses, which were not mentioned. Think about it. So he was rich, and he paid tight. We are using the scripture to answer scriptures. Now, please, let's go there. So Abraham had the promises like today you have the promises. So if you're arguing that I have the promises, Jesus has died for me. Jesus was crucified also from the foundations of the world when Abraham lived. But he paid tight. Because anyone who was living faith at that time saw Jesus as being crucified. So they look unto Jesus. The Alpha and Omega. He didn't just come. He was, he's the Alpha. He's the Omega. The Alpha means before they went, he was. That's why he said, before Abraham, I am. They all rejoice to see his day. His day is when every man is given a day to come upon the earth to make his mark unto Christ, unto the Lord. And Jesus also was given a day to make his mark. And afterwards, he chose another day that he will come. But this time for judgment. Your day is what you are living in. You have the promises from God. But you, do you put the ordinances and the precepts of God down? Because you think you have promises. Abraham also had promises. But he paid the tithe. Him that had the promises. Thank you Lord. I love the word of God. Wave your hand and say Father I love your word. Now from here we are going to a very dangerous place. Now please the seventh verse. Now beyond all contradiction. Now beyond all contradictions. Beyond all contradictions. The Whether there's argument. Whatever that you argue with. All contradictions. What happens? The lesser is blessed by the better. The lesser is blessed by the better. That means the scripture puts Abraham as the lesser and put Melchizedek as the better. So there's no way high priests are the lesser because they talk to God direct and they function in the... If God is your friend, you can't even walk towards him because he's the king. When he may come from his throne and be your friend, but when he goes to his throne, there are people, it's like the king, any king, maybe Ashanti king or the Gang king is your friend. He can come out and do some works with you, do business and all that with you, sit in place with you. The moment he touch base and his entourage come to receive him, you go back. 
follow protocol. Why? Even though you are his friend. Because the throne is what he assumed as a king. There are principles codified governing the throne, the existence and the functions of the throne, or the operation of the throne. It must be adhered to. So before God is the altar of fire, the golden altar that sits in the brimstone of God. So people function only within the altar. And the one who has qualified to appear before his majesty once and for all is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says he entered into the most holy place once and for all. We couldn't go there. Abraham could not go there. It took the sea to go there. The one who came from there went there. He appeared once for all. So the lesser is blessed of the better. So you are a child of God. You have been given promises. But the high priest is the one who receives the tithe and today he blesses you. Now he's already released the blessing like Abraham received the promises. It's a blessing. Promises are blessing bestowed upon you. But how do you get the blessing to function as you are living upon the earth realm with you? Unless you adhere to the protocols of the king. Something is cooking. This one is not Old Testament. He's highlighting here in the book of Hebrews. Today, there are Bible scholars who are trying to put the book of Hebrew down. But they cannot. Why? Because they see in the book of Hebrews chapter 4. The verse number 16 and say that come boldly to the throne of grace. Because that scripture fights them. You can't put it down. And the book of Hebrews chapter 1 that says Jesus is the express image of the Father. You can't put it down. You can also put it down where the Bible says it. In the chapter number 8. In one of the verses where he says Jesus has brought a better covenant. With better promises. So you can't put it down. What about the book of Hebrews chapter 11? Now faith is a substance of things hopeful. Then now faith is your faith to do exploits. What about the book of Hebrews chapter 12? Now we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and sin that easily beset us. So sin is a weight. It can beset you. That's why when, when you are convicted of sin, you are not bold to come to, before God. Blessed is the one whose sins are forgiven him because you can come boldly before God. And thank God all our sins are bloated away by the efficacy, the working of his blood that speak better things than the blood of Abel. Thank you, Jesus. Maya Tosha Tayandis. Where the Bible says he's the starter and the finisher of faith. A faith that developed the graces of God. Now hear this word. He says, now beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the better. Now the eighth verse, he says what? Yeah, this is connecting to what? Genesis. When Melchizedek, Melchizedek came from heaven. This is what explains where Melchizedek came from. He says where? Here yeah, mortal men receive tithes. This is Paul speaking who has got up into the third heavens. He knows what he's writing. Here on earth, mortal men, mortal men functions on earth. The terrestrials on earth. But celestial is unseen world. In the heavens. Here mortal men receive tithes. But where? But there he was. There! There! He's a king of Salem over people. He received tithes. Of whom it is witness that he lives forever. Hey, Koda Baba Yetish. How dare they talk against an ordinance that has been established in heaven? Anything in heaven is better than any confusion upon the earth. A mortal man cannot dispute things that have been ordained in the celestial world. In the heavenly realms itself, he a mortal man received tight, but there he, Melchizedek, received them, of whom it is witness. It's not that he's dead or he's living still taking tithes in heaven. Apostle, read again. Maybe I'm the one reading the thing that, okay, your own Bible is there. We'll open it and see it. Apostle, read it on. Here, mortal men receive tithes. Here, he receives mortal them. men receive tithes, but there. He receives them. He receives them. Who are we talking about? Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Of whom is what? Of whom it is witness that he lives. He lives. That means the guy is still around. Now, the Bible is coming to say something here. That even Levi, who received tithes, paid tithes through Abraham. So, Levi paid tithes to the invisible, but he did it through Abraham. Why? Because of Christ. Listen. 
like if you have not studied and you have not been exposed to divinity and you don't know the subject, shut up. Even Levi, who receives tithe, paid tithe through Abraham, so to speak. Levi, when I, after Levi, all the Levi, Levites have received tithe from their brethren. Then they take the tenth of it and go to the priest. And there was a ordinance that a priest should stand because Jesus hadn't yet come. So a priest should stand. And the priest took the tithe of tithe as a witness. And the Bible says, so to speak. So if you think you are spiritual, Paul said, know that I too have the Holy Spirit. Kadabo Shanda. Please, this, this is just two scriptures. Two scriptures. Two scriptures. And the Bible says the same chapter 7, the verse number 11. Let's, start from, let's go from the 10th verse. Please, we are, we are doing something here. Okay? That will cause you to understand who Jesus really is. As a savior and as a priest, a high priest. Now please, let's go ahead. For he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Levi was still in the loins of his father who is supposed to now receive tithe of his brethren and pay through Abraham. To who? God is going to be introducing someone. Let's go ahead, apostle. Therefore, if perfection were through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise according to the order? So of now it is introducing the perfect perfection. Even though they did this, they could not still receive the perfection. So if perfection was from the Levitical priesthood, because he now introduced Jesus here, even Levi, who received tithe, paid tithe through Abraham, so to speak. <laughs> Rakata. That scripture there opens up to a man coming. Listen, even Levi, because the Bible says here, he said now, beyond all contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the better. He's discussing something better here. Here, mortal men receive tithe, but there, Melchizedek received them, of whom it is witness that he lives. And Jesus is compared to what? He's the priest like Melchizedek. His ranking is like Melchizedek in priesthood, not in saviorhood. Melchizedek is not a savior, but Jesus is because Jesus died and saved people. So he is what? The savior of the world. But apart from being, being savior, he is the one that he stands before God as priest to minister to God on the behalf of us, the people. That is why he's the intercessor. And so the Bible says, Levi received tithe, he paid tithe through Abraham. Who was in Abraham? The seed, Korabashata. So he's introducing someone. But if you don't read it carefully, you will not see it. The Bible says, he a mortal man received tithe. But there, you know, he received them of whom it is witness, he leaves. He's discussing something. Even Levi on Edwem, who never met Melchizedek, who received tithe. So Levi was ordained to receive tithe. And the families of Levi, there were four. They were divided into four. Aaron and his two sons. And Moses stood at what part? Moses was separated as the prophet who gave them instructions from God. So Moses was their God. So God speaks to Moses. Moses relates to them and ordained them as priests. High priests. Now hear this. And then there are two sons who were ordained in the same manner. And then the Bible says there was Merari. There was what? Kohath. And there was what? Geshon. So they were one, two, three, four. And they had surrounded the temple. And their sons were released. So... If it was on the turn of Merari, the people were selected from there to go and worship and to clean the temple and do things on the temple. It's like today, people have been called to minister at the altar area and the temple. They watch the place, they keep the place, the security, and all that. Those are the people. They are Levites. Some of them are permanent. Some of them, they work and they come to do ministry works. I'm explaining something so that you can understand it. And they are rank and file in it. Now, hear this word. And so, so the Bible says, even Levi, when he, he, he received the tithe from his brethren, he paid the tithe, a tenth of it, but through Abraham. He paid it through Abraham. It was recorded. But just that Levi could not attain the perfection. So the Lord is now discussing that when it comes to the Christians, priesthood has changed. But he's coming there right now. This is what the religious Christianities could not understand. Many men could not understand this to teach it. Now, please, let's go ahead, Apostle. The book of Hebrews 7, we are still at the 7, where all contradictions are cleared. Please hear this. Verse 11. Yes. Therefore, 
if Therefore, perfection were through the if, Levitical priesthood, if perfection was through the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. For under the Levitical priesthood, the law was given. What further need was there that another priest? So if there was perfection rise? of Levi under the law, there wouldn't have been any need for another priest to arise who is not even from the Levitical family. That's what the scriptures are saying. And the scripture cannot be broken. Let him come who breaks scriptures. Let's go ahead, Apostle. What further need was there that another priest should rise according what to the order of Melchizedek? What further need that there should be another priest according to the order of Melchizedek who was not an earthly priesthood? So when we talk about earthly priesthood, it was the Levite who were the earthly priesthood. So there was no need for any other priest to rise because there was Levi. But the one who arose is in the order of Melchizedek. That means his priesthood is not from the earth. Ha! The Lord is talking to the people of God. Now let's go ahead, Apostle. And not be called according to the order of Aaron. For the priesthood being changed. And that priest that should arise was not called according to the, to the order of Aaron. And Aaron is actually a Levite. Aaron is a Levite. Moses is a Levite. Itama is a Levite. Eliezer is a Levite. But the priesthood now is coming to announce the priesthood. Let's go ahead, Apostle. The 12th verse, please pay attention here. This is all, what is going to open a lot of things to people. Let's go ahead, Apostle. Shall I back For the himself? priesthood being changed yes. of necessity, there is also a change of the law. So the priesthood from Aaron has been changed unto someone. So of a necessity, when the priesthood is changed, Aaron was operating under the law. Therefore, the law also has been changed from the law unto grace. Now please hear it again, Apostle. Read it. It says, For the priesthood being changed, yes. of necessity, there is also a change of the law. There is also a change of the law. Now let's go ahead, proceed. For I he, love the scriptures. For he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another For the tribe. one we are speaking about who the priesthood has changed unto him he doesn't even belong to the Levite so according to the tribe the 12 tribes of Israelite if we are going to talk about this they will stone you to death because God has dedicated the Levite to be priest so God shut up prophet prophesied it there will be a Messiah there will be a Messiah the people thought he was going to be a military man they didn't know that he was going to be a high priest and then after, after the high priest he was going to be what a savior so he comes to the earth, dies and saves the people, and then takes his own blood. When he takes his own blood, if he came to the earth and there was a blood for the atonement of the people, he wouldn't have died. But because there was nobody could to atone for the people of the whole world, he needed to do it. He laid down his own life. He was killed like a lamb. And then after he resurrected, he was now given the robe as a high priest. He took his own blood entered into the most holy place once. Because the Bible said the, the, the blood of the goat and sheep which were killed outside the camp, the high priest would take them and then go into the holy of holies and then sacrifice for himself and sacrifice also his sons. And then sacrifice for the old 12 tribes of Israelite. But this one, he was already holy. He did not need to do a sacrifice for himself and the people. He only did the sacrifice of the people. Though the whole world sins was put upon him. Ah, they let the scapegoat go away. Do you know the scapegoat? Bah, he said, let Barabbas go. Ah, but crucify Jesus our Lord. So he is the lamp without blemish. But they put their whole sins upon him. The lamp that was with fault, they let him go. The one without blemish, they took him and killed him. That's my Lord Jesus. They died for me. He died for me. They killed him for me. Now you might think I'm perfect. No, it's because my perfection comes from him that died for me. A dirty sinner like me. How can he choose me to be a priest for him? Are you hearing my point, somebody? Yes. And the Bible says we are all priesthood. Ah, oh, we are holy generation. Ah, oh, we are not just generation. We are holy people, chosen of God. Are you hearing my point? Yes. Of whom the promises of God has come. Are you talking to me, somebody? Oh, how can we disobey so great a commandment like this? How can we say we will not do it? We will not do it. We will not do it. We were born like this. We were born for this. The spirit in us yearns to tell us here ah, that we must behold him that died. 
they resurrected and entered into the most holy place with her blood. He said he entered into the most holy place, not without blood, and atoned for the sins of the whole world, which me and you, we achieve. Hallelujah. Can you clap your hands and shout, glory. Glory. Hallelujah. This is what many people did not understand. Please, let's go ahead. When you understand things like this, you pay your tithe according to faith and from your own accord. It's not by duress. It's not by force. Thank you, my father, for coming upon me. I give you all the praise and glory. Hallelujah. Now, let's read this. This is so beautiful for me. It's so be- You see, I understand it from the perspective of a higher realm. So, when I'm this, so when these things are not understood by people, I say, Ah, oh, Lord, haven't your priests seen this? Haven't your people seen this? Don't deceive the people of God if you don't know. Let's go ahead, Apostle. For he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe, from now, which no man... of him, you see, the, the one of whom we are speaking about these things, the change of priesthood, the change of the law, he doesn't belong to the tribe of even Levi. That's what annoying the people of Israelites. He belongs to another tribe. Let's go, let's see which tribe. From which no man has officiated at the altar. And his tribe, nobody came to officiate as in sprinkling and atoning for people on the altar. No man, no priest from that tribe that he came from. He is the first to do it. And he is the last to do it. So when he said, the Bible said he is the first and the last. When it is coming from the one who is born from the dead, he is the first. The first born over all creation, he is the first. The first from his tribe to do everything. As priest, he's the first. Who can beat Jesus to the first? That's why we give him our first and our best. Now please, let's go ahead, Apostle. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah. So he's talking about our Lord. It is evident that our Lord arose from Judah. He came into his own, Judah. His own did not receive him. So when Jesus came upon the earth realm, in Jerusalem, it was the place where the temple was, where Judah was. It was only the tribe of Judah and the Levites. The Levites lived, the Levites did not have inheritance, so they lived around the temple. And Judah lived opposite the door to the tabernacle. These mysteries in the Bible are no mysteries. These are people, these are things that are there. When, when Aaron was sharing the inheritances, when he got to the door of the tabernacle, he gave that place east. He gave that place to Judah. He gave that place to Judah. So Judah was living opposite the altar. So when Jesus said, I am the door, because he's the king of a Judah. So when any Judah want to go to the door, through the door to the temple, he is the king, so he's the door. He doesn't give you access, you don't go. So when he says, I am the door, it is not a term orchestrated or coined from anywhere. It is an exact revelation of who he is. I am the door because I am the king of the Jews. If anybody wants to come to the Father, it is served through me because the temple, I face it. I close the door. I am the door. I am the king over the place. Who is he who can come trespass and go through? Because priesthood has changed. I am the priest, the high priest. And I am the king as well. So when it comes to the one who appears before God, I am. When it comes to the one who goes to make the priest with atonement and intercession, I am. So who is he who will trespass and go there? No, I am. And funny enough, the people of Israel, they were doing something called trespass offering. So if somebody's wife was there and mistakenly you slept with her, you didn't know that that was somebody's wife and later got to know, you do something called trespass offering. If you go to somebody's land and do some things and you didn't know, you do something called trespass offering. But let me tell you something. When Jesus came, trespass offering has been abolished. Are you hearing my point, somebody? So you do not dare. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says he became a sin. So the Bible says here, in the 13th verse, Therefore, he of whom these things are spoken belongs to another tribe, from which no man has officiated at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah. 
He didn't say people have not gone to eat from the altar or they've not gone to pray at the altar. No, that's not what he's saying. He's talking about the fact that no one has officiated, taking officiation, lightning, burning incense, going with the blood of, to atone. Never. Even David did not do that. But hear this word. But, but it is evident that our Lord arose from Judah, of which tribe Moses spoke nothing concerning priesthood. Now the Bible says Moses, he Moses who prophesied to the end of everything unto Christ, never saw this to prophesy it. It was hidden to Moses. He only knew that Jesus would become the biggest man. He said, God will raise another man, him you shall worship. He'll listen. But he never spoke about priesthood to Jesus. All the priesthood entitlement was unto Joseph, Joseph and his children. You check the scriptures of Moses when he was prophesying in the book of Deuteronomy when he was about to leave. When the Lord told Moses to go unto the mountain for I will kill you on the mountain. When Moses was being looked upon to die and he could not die because the Bible said his eyes were not dim and his bara, his body was not wrinkling. The anointing of God's spirit was dwelling upon him. Uh, he parasha, dodo pianda, ordained 70 prophets to his creditor. Manosa, his spirit one day came unto them. The guy was not growing old. He was not being tamed. He was anointed. It was in his body. The anointing of might was superimposing itself upon his body. The guy was seriously anointed. But the Bible said he could not see to prophesy. Why? Because it was not given unto him. Of which Moses did not speak anything concerning priesthood. Yeah, it is far more, it is yet far more evident if in the likeness of Melchizedek there arises another priest. He's not in the likeness of Aaron. Zadok, none of them. He's not. Who has come not according to the law of a fleshly commandment, but according to the power of an endless life. So God never revealed the priesthood to anybody. But he himself announced her. This is what God himself, the witness of God, we are going to be reading it. This is where God himself announced it. That is why it didn't make it of a fleshly commandment. It did not make him a fleshly commandment. But the power of an endless life. Somebody who has received the power of an endless life. That means the life you have received, it doesn't end. It continues unto eternity. And eternity is forever. Are you hearing my point? Somebody shout, I have the life of Christ in me. Thank you, Jesus. For he testifies, for he God testifies. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. For on the one hand, there is annulling of the former commandment because, because of its weakness and unprofitableness. For the law made nothing perfect. On the other hand, there is the bringing in of a better hope through which we draw near to God. And God swore an oath and said, this is my son. Have you seen where it started from? It started from Titan. Melchizedek, Titan. Look at the place he's getting. So he's telling you that the priesthood has changed. Titan was from Abraham. That is why they left, the Levite paid tithe through Abraham. Because they were connecting it to what? Jesus. Because to you and your seed, in you, in you, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Who was in Abraham? That's why Jesus appeared and they said, Oh, you know, are you greater than our father? I said, Ah, Abraham rejoiced to see me. They referred, he said, Solomon, he said, Greater than Solomon is here. He said, Moses, said, Ah, Moses spoke about me. <laughs> why will you pass again? These are the three giants of, of the Bible. They spoke about David. He says, I'm the son of David. So they cried and said, Son of David, have mercy on me. Where again were they going? Then they pick up stones. He said, ah, for which of these things will you stone me? For good works. He said, no, for good works we stoned you not. But for you. Because you said you are greater than Abraham, our father. Greater than Ayabaha. Moses, our prophet. You are greater than her. David, the patriot who sat upon the throne. Ah, you are greater than even Solomon, the king. Ah, we must stone you. He says, ah, wait. Let's go into scripture. The book of Psalm chapter 82. I have said, you are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High God. We trust you've enjoyed today's broadcast. For more information, visit www.johnanarchyministries.org, www.worldwidewordministries.org, or call 0302-242-2000.
0302-507-154 or 0540-996-670. This broadcast is made possible by partners of John Anoche Ministries.